everybody, it's Molly from Throne of Grace. Now we told you in an earlier video that we would be sharing more about our It's Just Emmy planners, how they got their name and where the design inspiration came from. And to help us do that, I'm excited to introduce to you one of my favorite people, my sister. Thank you. I'm so glad you can be Thanks here with us. Um, so you're the creative brains behind the It's Just Emmy planners. What led you to start making planners? Well, really, I had no intention to start making planners. I was um, actually running another business. I was an event planner, and I just found that I needed a planner for myself, and I could not find one anywhere. I searched high and low. Um, I really had in my mind what I wanted it to look like, and I just couldn't find that. I the way my brain works, the way I see my own my calendar in my head was vertically, <laughs> and every planner I could find the stores the days were laid out mm -hmm. horizontally, and that just didn't make sense to my brain. So um, I, I couldn't find one. I decided to make one myself, and I did with zero intention of ever selling them. Um, and then I um, had a neighbor that saw it, and she wanted one. And so I made her one, and then she was on PTA, and mm. the PTA board members all saw it, and they all wanted one. And um, right around that same time, I learned about this thing called Etsy that was this new mm -hmm. up-and-coming um, website. And so I was like, well, maybe I'll try putting them on Etsy, and it just kind of blew up from there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. neat story. Now, in a world where so much of life is digital, and we hold these smartphones in our pockets that have calendars and reminders, um, why is it that people are still buying paper planners? Well, that's what my husband kept saying to me when I started this business, and that was even before the digital world was so yeah. crazy. Um, but you know what? I think that women like to write things down. I have always been a paper writer. When I go to the grocery store, I prefer to have a paper list. Mm -hmm. I have the list apps, but I don't like using a um, digital version of that kind of stuff. So, And for me, I need to see my week laid out in front of me. And I just don't feel like any of the calendar apps right. really have done a good job of giving you a visual display yeah. of your week. Especially and, on a smartphone. It's small, yeah, you know. Yeah, small, it's hard to see, and um, and I just need to see, like, where are the holes of time that I have? Mm -hmm. And um, and so I think a lot of women feel that way, and they just need to be able to, and I have friends that do use the digital calendars. I've started using it a little bit more, especially for the reminder features, but I still like to have a written version. Yeah. So you mentioned how uh, the PTA kind of got a hold of this idea. Um, what else did you do to, to market your planners? How did it go from... Really nothing. I really never marketed much. Um, it was all word of mouth, pretty much. And at that time, Etsy was a much smaller marketplace. I mean, people didn't really know as much yeah. about Etsy, but the people who did know about it were seeing products more. Because when you would search for a day planner, it wasn't one of 100 sure. pages sure. worth of results that you were getting. Sure. So. Um, so yeah, it mostly was all word of mouth. And then about two years, I think, into my business, um, I met Lisa Turkhurst, who is a very popular Christian author and speaker. Mm -hmm. And um, she saw my planners and loved them, and so I sent her one. And then she asked if she could blog about it one day. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, so she did. And that day, I got more sales than I had gotten in a whole month, wow. in like my highest selling month before yeah. that. And so it really kind of blew up from there. Yeah, neat. Yeah. Okay, so we have to ask about the name. They're called It's Just Emmy Planners, which is a funny name. Mm -hmm. Where did that name come from? Well, so actually, it kind of came when I was trying to quit my business. Mm -hmm. um, they had been called Much Ado About You, which I hated that name. <laughs> um, it was way too hard to say. Well, that related to your party planning business. It did, yeah. That started with my event planning business. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I decided that it was time to step away from the planner business to grow my family, um, I decided to kind of just put that all behind me and change my Instagram name because I was really active with Instagram. And so I changed it to It's Just Emmy, really because I was just saying, I'm done with planners, it's just Emmy now, this is all you're getting. If you're here for the day planner business, it's no longer day planner business. But then my friends and family pointed out that I've been saying that phrase my whole life because my name is Emmy, and my whole life people have asked me, uh, is your name just Emmy or is it Emily? And I would just say, nope, it's just Emmy. And so it really is something I've always said. So that's, that's it became my, a my yeah, and it became my Instagram username. And then when I decided to bring back the planners, mm -hmm. um, it just stuck. We just stuck with that. I didn't want to change my name again. Right. <laughs> there you go. That explains it. 
All right, well, will you explain to us what your favorite feature is of your Insta Semi Planners? Okay, well, I really have used a lot of different planners, and even since quitting my business, when we were about a yeah, year where there was a gap, mm -hmm. and I did try a bunch of different planners, some nice that are very popular, and I, it, I really was left scratching my head as to why they're so popular, because I think my truly favorite thing about ours is that it's very simple. It's a very simple layout. It's black and white. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of bells and whistles, but I like that. And um, there's not a lot of extra pages to make it too thick and clunk it up. The paper is really thick and great yeah, quality. Show, we don't have your planner, but here's a blank one. Yeah, so I it. love the paper quality. It's very thick. It's very smooth. It's easy to write on. But it's because it's kind of a nice thick paper, It's I like that there's not a lot of extra other yeah. things added in. Um, I always love that there was a month layout and the weekly layout. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I think the most useful space for me is this little space in the bottom. At, um, the days are laid out by the hours, yes. but then there's a space at the bottom that's blank. I, I use that space for so many things, whether it's meal planning mm -hmm. or um, to-do lists mm -hmm. or a grocery list mm -hmm. or just a reminder that today is pajama day at school, right. those kinds of things, and I think that's just really a useful space. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And, you know, you kind of mentioned a few things, but what else do you think really sets your planners apart from all those out there? Because like you said, when you started, there weren't a ton of options. No. There are a lot more now, but I still feel like yours really... Yeah. I mean, I really different. think it is the simplicity of it that is the main thing. Um, it's just easy, user-friendly. And to me, I, I've seen a lot of planners that are laid out vertically, but they are laid out by like morning, afternoon, evening, and to me, it's so important to have the hourly layout. I just, I, I need to be able to block out my day and say like, okay, here's my chunk of time that I have extra time. Which I love too that with the hourly slots, you still have the option of just using it as a morning, totally. afternoon, evening, yeah. if you don't care about the times, but it's there for those who really do. And sometimes I use my whole day to just make a list of what I need to do that day, and it's not necessarily in the block of time, but if I don't have the specific things that are blocking my time that day, mm -hmm. I can just use it as list space. Yeah, very true. All right, now as you mentioned, Emmy, there are a lot of people who still um, really enjoy the paper planner, who are just not you know, able to switch over to the digital, just don't feel that it replicates what they need. Um, but you like to take it even a step further, and you like to make your planner a family record that can be a treasure for your family. So how do you do that? And is it something that I need to have a lot of creativity? No, in? yeah, I was just gonna say, it, it can be really simple, and I. I, I do follow several accounts on Instagram that are like planner accounts mm -hmm. where they do all the stickers and they make it super fancy. And I feel like sometimes that's just intimidating because um, not everyone can do that and not everyone has the time to do that. Yeah, yeah or keep it up. So I try to really give myself grace and when I have time, I make it cute and when I don't, I don't. And that's just it. And mm -hmm. so some weeks I'll have washi tape all over mm -hmm. it and some cute stickers and something pinned in it. Um, and other days, it's like I barely wrote anything that week, but I got my stuff done. So yeah. um, I really just keep it simple, as simple as I possibly can. But um, yeah, for me, it is my scrapbook. I don't scrapbook, mm -hmm. so uh, this is how I journal my family. And I truly do go back. I have yeah. every planner I've ever had, and I go back and I will look at, oh my gosh, that was the time that we did this. Um, and I try to write things, even if I go, have to go back to write things in, yeah. I try to write things like, we had dinner with the in-laws or mm -hmm. things like that because I want to remember those days and those moments. Mm -hmm. And so even if it's not something that I'm writing my planner because I need to remember to do it, I will write it so that I remember that I did do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I totally agree. It's really neat to be able to look back at those. Yeah. Even sometimes practically, I'd had to go back to my planner to figure out when my kids had their last eye doctor exactly. appointment because the doctor had to send us a reminder card. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you can have it as a record in that way too. But yeah. it is really neat when you make it special and yeah. um, a way to keep those memories. So yeah. love that. We'll share, we'll share with them um, a video of what you've done an example of um, how you've made it really cute and crafty. But remember, you don't have to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good.
having you. But before we go, I do want to ask one last question. I wore my Choose Joy shirt on purpose, so I wouldn't forget to talk to you about this. But um, as we shared in here before, there came a time when you did have to step away from the, uh, the paper planner business, and um, you had to spend more time on your growing family. And um, as you did that, you also felt God kind of put in your heart a, a mission for a, a new area of ministry. And so I'd like for you to share with us a little bit about that. Okay, yeah. a little bit about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we um, grew our family through adoption. Um, we have one biological son, and then we were not able to ever get pregnant again. We went through years of infertility. And um, I, while I was still running my business, we adopted our first daughter. And then the reason I quit was because we were adopting our second daughter, and three kids and a very active business was not going to work for me. So um, I stepped away at that point. And right around that time, I had a dream, um, a very vivid dream that was one of the most clear callings I've ever had in my life, and um, it was about this conference um, for people going through infertility, and just a place to support those people. When I was in that season of life, I was so lonely, and um, it was just a very painful season, but also mm -hmm. that was compounded by the fact that it was very lonely, mm -hmm. and I just wanted a place, I wanted to create a community where I felt like there wasn't one, and give people going through that season a place to come and find their me too. So I started a conference called Choose Joy, Choose Joy. and um, that was seven years ago. We just had our seventh conference um, two months ago, and um, we do it annually, and it's been amazing. We've had over a thousand people come through the doors of Choose Joy, and we have people from uh, I think at least 30 states in awesome. the country, mm -hmm. and then also like four or five other countries come. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just been an amazing, amazing experience. And we, we are now moving into some other um, kind of topics that we're going to be doing conferences on and growing that, but it's That's just great. been great. Well, we would love to hear more about that. It is an amazing ministry, and I'm so proud of you and what mm -hmm. God's done through you. So um, maybe we'll have to make another video and have you come back and talk a little more about that because I'd love to share with our viewers how they can get involved too. Yeah, it'd be great. All right, well, thanks, Emmy, and thanks for being with us. And thanks, everybody. <laughs> we really so, are sisters. We really are. Yeah, yeah. You can decide <laughs> yourself now. Do we look just alike or are we nothing alike we, we get both, both. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys for joining us and we hope that you will um, push the red subscribe button and join us and we'll continue to update you when new videos are posted bye-bye be sure to follow us on instagram or facebook and visit us on our website at throneofgrace.com to contact us through email or link directly to the throne of grace shop